Hi, I'm Tom Long. This week's meditation is at the Norton Street Beach Access. So the reading for this Sunday, September 27, is Exodus chapter 17, beginning with chapter 1. We're going to talk about the rock, the rod, and the water. And uh, I did bring some water with me. I don't know if you noticed that in the background. Uh, but in this story, it talks about that period where the Israelites are in the wilderness. They had been slaves in Egypt and God had uh, sent his plagues on Egypt, and as a result, Egypt had uh, given them plunder, food, livestock, provisions for travel, and they had headed off into the wilderness. But uh, they came to a particular campsite where uh, there was no water. Now, previously, they had been hungry in the wilderness, and God had provided quails that just fell out of the sky onto the ground, and um, manna, which is thought to be a bread-like substance that appeared in the grass in the morning like frost. And so you, one might think that uh, when they came on this situation where there was no water, that uh, they would be cool and just think Jehovah Jireh, God provides. But no, uh, they were more like us than that. <laughs> so after their deliverance, after their provision, uh, they hit this uh, dry spot, literally a dry spot where they're thirsty, and uh, they begin to grumble and to quarrel and to uh, fuss with Moses. And um, Moses, you know, asks, why do you put God to the test? And God tells Moses uh, to take the rod that he divided the Jordan River with and um, to go and strike a rock, take the elders with him, go strike a rock, so he's got witnesses and water will come out of the rock. And that's what happened. And, uh, but the, the particular part that really struck me was uh, the verse where the Israelites asked the question, is the Lord among us or not? And, uh, and that's kind of the, the thinking I want to, uh, to look at this morning. I'm not going to sit here and, uh, and, and dump all, all of my burdens and woes and cares on you, um, but I have them. You can probably see that my leg is sticking out straight because my knee barely bends. That's it. And, uh, you know, I've, I'm an old man. I've been through some stuff, but that only means that I'm human. And in fact, uh, I think if you ever are to look at somebody, whether they're a gifted athlete or a celebrity or the guy that uh, is uh, your nurse in the hospital and you think, oh, these people are healthy, they're good looking, they've got a steady income, uh, they've got beautiful children, their lives must be just perfect. And Sometimes, you know, the burdens that we carry are not actually visible burdens, but I believe that everybody is broken. I believe that everybody has burdens that they have to carry. And uh, for many of them, those burdens are invisible. And in some ways, that might make them feel more alone in carrying those burdens. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, Paul wrote, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. And the word translated tempted there could also be translated from the Greek to mean tested. And it's saying that God's not gonna let us be uh, tested slash tempted. He's not gonna put us in situations that are going to irreparably harm us, but he will provide a way through that situation. So God doesn't say you're not going to walk, you're not going to go through the desert. 
God doesn't say you're not going to get thirsty. The Bible doesn't say that there's not going to be times when you're hungry. We live in a time right now where uh, if you just look at the natural disasters brought on by global warming, the, uh, at the time that I'm speaking, our entire west coast is up in flames. Family after family has lost their homes to wildfires. The east coast has been repeatedly hammered and, and the gulf coast with hurricanes and going up the uh, river valleys there's been flooding across the eastern United States, tornadoes in the Midwest. It has been, it's been horrific, the suffering that people are going through. And so we might find ourselves being in that uh, place like uh, the Israelites saying, is the Lord among us or not? And uh, I think we've all heard uh, Mary Stevenson's story. And I think while we just enjoy the view of the ocean, I'm gonna let that, uh, that story scroll down across the, uh, the screen just to remind us of what's going on when we feel most alone. And how sometimes the verse that I read you from 1 Corinthians 10, 13, sometimes God fulfills that promise in ways that we just fail to perceive. We don't have the faith to see it, but he's there. One night I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky. In each scene, I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints. Other times, there was one only. This bothered me because I noticed that during the low periods of my life, when I was suffering from anguish, sorrow, or defeat, I could see only one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord, You promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I've noticed that during the most trying periods of my life, there has only been one set of footprints in the sand. Why, when I needed you most, have you not been there for me? The Lord replied, The years when you have seen only one set of footprints, my child, is when I carried you. All of us are flawed and beautiful at the same time. And uh, the analogy that came to my mind thinking about that was the, uh, the Roman statues, you know, that have their arms or noses uh, broken off, but you can still see the beauty of the artist's original handiwork. And we're, we're a lot like that. And we can become like the Israelites. We can become bitter and uh, turn on one another and even question whether God is there or not. But I believe that's where we meet the generous grace of God. It's where we come to what appears to be a rock and it's struck by a rod and water comes out. And to me, the rock is Jesus. The rod is the cross that he died upon and the water is the spirit of life that he pours into us when we place our trust in what he has done for us. And as Christians, we look backward at the cross in the same way that the story in Exodus looks forward to the cross when it talks about the rock, the rod, and the water. And the New Testament reading from the epistles is uh, taken from uh, Philippians. It's Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. And in this passage, which I'll put down in the description below, in this passage, we're told to be imitators of Christ. And it's a, it's a picture of the upside down kingdom of God, where in the kingdom of the world, if you've got health, if you've got strength, if you've got money, if you've got political power, if you've got um, influence, if you're famous on uh, Instagram or whatever, uh, those are the people that are admired. But in the kingdom of God, it's upside down. 
It's the meek, it's the humble, it's the servant, it's the person that puts them out for another person. And so Jesus was the model of that. He went to the cross, he died, and then God not only raised him to life, but this passage in Philippians tells us that it raised him to a place where he's exalted above all others. So the way that Jesus went up was first he went down in service. And that's the model that Paul sets for us in the way that we relate to other people. And sometimes that model can um, uh, be difficult <laughs> because, for example, I think it's uh, verse 3, if I can get there, says, in humility, value others above yourselves. And that can be, that can be tough because uh, it's not that you don't have the same value as the next person. But this, this isn't saying that you value others above yourselves in the sense that um, they have more value than you do or that you should do whatever they ask you to do or tell you to do. It's asking you instead to think about what is good for the other person and not good in the sense of what they want or what you want for them, but in the sense of what is good because that's what God wants for them. And so it's not saying that you uh, lay down and get rolled over by uh, other people. It's saying that you bend your, your self-interest to the interests of the kingdom, to the interests of, of God. And if you're like me, that's really hard to do. It's hard to get out of your own skin and think about what's good for the other person. But um, I believe that it's only God's grace, that water that came out of the rock, I believe that it's only God's grace, that living spirit of his in us, that can help, that can open our eyes to the place where we can actually see the needs of others from the perspective of God. And so my, my prayer today is, God help me today to be aware of someone else's need and what I can do to help them find water in their desert. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Until next time, may God bless you.